<laughs> okay, so we are going to start the more analytical, mathematical part of physics now. Okay, so we're done with thermodynamics and energy and, well, we'll come back to energy work and energy theorem later on in the unit. We'll do the mathematical kind of analytical part of that as well. Okay, um, but what we're moving on to today is more about the way we measure things, some of the ways we miscommunicate things, and then a few kind of simple calculation kind of things. All right? So, um, let me ask you this. How far is it to Edmonton? Three hours, couple hours? Three and a half from where you live? Okay, I heard two people give me an answer in kilometers. Everybody else told me how long it takes to get there. What did I ask? I asked how far it is. This is what we do wrong, okay? And everybody does it, okay? They do it in Europe, they do it in North America, okay? When somebody asks, how far is it? Oh, 15 minutes. No, it isn't. It might be 15 minutes sometimes. Is it 15 minutes every time? No, is Edmonton always the same distance from here? Yes. Yes, unless the continent cracks open in the middle, Edmonton will always be a little over 300 kilometers from here, okay? But it is not always three hours from here. Take it from me, I've driven there lots and lots of times. It is anywhere from two hours and 30 minutes, don't ask, <laughs> to nine and a half. How did you make that time to nine and a half hours? There was a massive snowstorm. We were coming back from our physics trip in Edmonton and um, it, they closed the road and we had to go on to the secondary road to get home, and all the traffic from Highway 2 went on to a two-lane road, and there were a bunch of idiots who were still trying to pass, going in the ditch and making everybody go even slower. So, when someone asks, or in particular, when a question asks how far something is, they want to know how far it is. If it asks how long it takes, then you can tell them how long it takes. This is not your fault. It is a cultural problem, okay, that we talk about distances in terms of time. How many times to Edmonton went to watch the Edmonton Oilers lose? Like how many of those times? <laughs> Actually, I, I very rarely go to the game because I can't afford it. How many times Actually, the last time I watched another game live, I was in university, and they were pretty good then. Yeah. Probably yeah, now San Jose. But they probably still lost. It's a big upset. Yeah, yeah. it's a big upset. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you done taking your jabs? Yeah. Let's see where everybody's sitting at the end of the season. Dead last. Yeah, exactly. The Bills got beat by the Bills. Like, people are just three hours. But that's assuming I can go the speed limit, right? Speed is something that could change. Okay, okay. Speed is something that can change, right? That's why time is not a consistent measure of how far Edmonton is. Edmonton is always just over 300 kilometers from here, but it isn't always three hours because maybe I'm with my crazy friend who drives really fast, okay? Or maybe I'm in a bus in a snowstorm and I'm only going 45 kilometers an hour, okay? In those cases, the time is variable because the speed is variable, but the distance isn't. As long as I take highway two, it's gonna be 300 kilometers. Unless I you know, take the milk rub and go through every little town on the way there, it's gonna be 300 kilometers. On our way back from Grand Prairie at the start of the season, it was a uh, 16 hour drive. Yeah. Yeah, it just all depends on what's going on in the road, right? Construction, day, accidents, weather, all of that stuff, right? Okay, so here's the problem with that, guys. When we tell people information like that, we could be doing them a great disservice. Okay, I'll give you an example for how. Um, my friend and I were uh, backpacking in Kootenai National Park one time. Okay, and we had a 34 kilometer day plan. Uh, so it was up one pass, down into a deep valley, up over a second pass, and then down into another valley. It was a hard, long day. And um, it, it was a drought year. We had actually run out of water about three hours earlier, and we had 
kind of gotten to a point where we thought we were lost. Because even though there was a path, we felt like we should have been to the campground we had planned to be at, and we weren't. So we sat down, dehydrated, hungry, um, and we're trying to process things, which it, you, know, you can imagine is not a great state to be in when you're trying to process things. Looking at our map, trying to figure it out, and uh, all of a sudden we see this guy who is like bebop, and he is running up the hill towards us. And we're like, okay, we can ask this guy. He probably knows where Tumbling Creek Campground is, so we'll ask him. And he comes up to us, and we're like, hey, dude, dude, did you come from Tumbling Creek Campground? And he you know, stops. He's barely out of breath. Okay? And he says, oh, yeah, mate, it's like 20 minutes down the trail. And we're like, oh, sweet. 20 minutes, and we're going to be getting, we're going to filter, filter water, we're going to eat, we're gonna, it's going to be so good. An hour later, we are planning how we are going to hunt this guy down and kill him, okay? because we are still not there. Well, he's okay? 20 minutes. And so, about another 20 minutes after that, we finally like stumble in to this campground. We, you know, we're two out of shape teachers on a summer vacation, and we just were slow, um, and couldn't admit that we were slow. I'm going to say it was more his fault. My friends, he was a college wrestler, so he's like 5'2", <laughs> shaped like a square, short little legs. Hey. Yeah, short legs. Um, so, I mean, he was a very good wrestler because he was short and had little legs. But um, he's not a great hiking partner. Actually, I take that back. He's an excellent backpacking partner. Because you always hike with someone slower than you. Uh, that way, when the bear comes, <laughs> you live. I think he'd be better at tripping you than you were at tripping I, him. You know what, yeah, exactly that conversation you. came up. I, said, I like hiking with you because I know I can always outrun you. And he goes, do you realize I'm closer to your knees than you are? <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, this guy had told us how long it took him. In retrospect, we thought back to it. The guy's wearing like combat fatigues, carrying the heavy pack. Okay, So he was probably on a training run. He was probably like, you know, Aussie Special Forces. Okay, on a training run through high altitude, okay, um, you know, just taking a job with the heavy pack on. Right? How are two out of shape teachers on their summer vacation supposed to keep up with that guy? And we were going downhill. Okay, so he says twenty minutes. That was terrible. He should have never told us twenty minutes. We can't run. We can't run like he was running. Okay, um, so he told us how long it took him, not us. Our speed was much less than that. Okay, so in the end, like we stopped several times and went, was that guy just messing with us? Like, did he give us bad directions? Are we actually lost? Like, how are we going to find water? And then how, we can't cook our food without water. What are we going to do? Like, we were actually starting to get pretty anxious about the whole situation because of his poor directions. If he'd have told us it's three and a half kilometers down the trail, we would have known that it would have taken us over an hour to get there. And we wouldn't have been worried when we weren't there after 20 minutes. Of did you go from the road to Flow Lake to New Mud then to Tumbling? Yes. Yes. Why? Um, <laughs> because we <laughs> thought we were good. No, no, it was the guy. So we we stopped at Flow, went yeah, to New Mud, sure. and then yeah. over Tumbling. Yeah. Yeah. So we did one year, like two years ago, we did from the other road, the road we come out of. Yeah. To By to the Tumbling. Tank Pots. Yeah. Yeah. To Tumbling. Oh, wait, no. Tumbling. No, to Helmet Creek or Helmet yeah, Falls. Yeah. Yeah. To Tumbling. Sometimes. To Tumbling. The other way. Yeah. And then last year we did to flow to Numa out. Yeah. We and did the whole did we did the whole rock wall. Yeah, why? Um, <laughs> challenge? <laughs> I'm sure we'll Testing our metal, <laughs> failing miserably. No. Yeah. So um, Yeah, it's important guys to communicate things the right way. And that's what we're gonna look at today is how to communicate things, but also how we measure things. Because there's actually different ways to measure different values. I could have something that is a scalar quantity or something that is a vector quantity. Okay? So basically, scalar and vector quantities measure the same thing from different points of view. Okay? Scalar quantities are measured only with a magnitude, okay? So things like distance and time are scalar, 
okay? If I ask you how far is it to Edmonton, you say 300 kilometers, okay? You've told me the distance to Edmonton. Did you tell me Edmonton was north of here? No, because you gave me distance. Distance doesn't give direction, it's a scalar quantity. Now, if you said Edmonton is, um, you know, 289 kilometers, uh, 13 degrees east of north from here, now you've given me a vector description, okay? But you're assuming I'm gonna go in a straight line from here to Edmonton, okay? Highway two is not a straight line, right? It bows out to go to Red Deer, okay? And then comes back in to go up to Edmonton, okay? It's not a straight line. So it's a little further, okay, to follow it because it isn't a straight line, but it is about 300 kilometers. But if I have a helicopter, I can fly straight there, okay? So it would be a little less, but I would have to know exactly what direction or what vector to take. Okay, everyone kind of follow the difference there? Okay, now that doesn't make one better than the other, right? In lots of situations, a scalar value is appropriate. In lots of situations, a vector value is more appropriate. Okay, but neither one is better. Okay, neither one is more accurate because accuracy depends on how you measure something or how accurately you measure it. Okay, all right, um, other scalar quantities, as we said, distance is a scalar quantity, time is a scalar quantity. There's another one we mess up all the time, okay? We always tell people time is a vector quantity. Oh yeah, I live 15 minutes east of here. Really? Time goes east? So is it four o'clock south? Last time I checked, time doesn't have direction. Time goes forward, that's it. That's a okay. direction. That, well, it just goes, right? Because it's the only direction it can go, by definition, it's a scalar quantity. I can't make it go sideways, okay? I mean, unless you're in a multiverse or something like that. Okay? But no, I can't make time go any way other than the way it's going to do, which is it's going to pass. Okay? That actually only changes people's perception of time. Oh, you got you there. Okay. Um, so lots of different, and then vector quantities, okay, they are more like, you know, they have a magnitude and a direction, okay, so speed is scalar, 100 kilometers an hour, okay, velocity, which you probably have used interchangeably up until today, is a vector quantity, so it would be 100 kilometers at 10 degrees southeast, okay, I would have to put a direction on velocity because velocity is a vector quantity. Okay? It's why you only ever get a speeding ticket, not a velocity ticket. Okay? Because if you break the speed limit, it doesn't matter which direction you're going, unless, of course, you're going the wrong way, okay? then that's a separate ticket. Okay? But um, you don't, your speed limit okay, is a speed. It is a scalar quantity. It just says, this is the fastest you should go. Okay? It doesn't say, this is the fastest and in what direction you should go. Right, can everyone follow the difference? Okay. Question, Taylor, you're done. Okay, All right, so it's important to understand that those things can <coughs> communicate similar things, but do it from a different point of view, okay? So the math that we'll eventually get to today is going to involve these two formulas. V equals D over T. And this formula. These ones are height, they have four ends in the same one. <laughs> v equals D over T. I know you think I'm going crazy, but I'm not. It's going to be the, uh, I promise. You can trust a crazy person's word? What's that? You can trust a crazy person's word? Of course you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So these are actually different formulas, even though they contain what look to be the same variables. Okay. This one here deals with vector quantities. That's why the speed, or the, sorry, the velocity, the V, and the D, the displacement, have little arrows over top. Okay? Anything with a little arrow over top is a vector quantity. Okay? Yeah, they're arrows that only have one tab because that's the way they're typically written. Okay? Scalar quantities are not going to have an arrow over top of them because they don't have direction. Okay? So this one says that velocity equals 
displacement divided by time. Okay. This one says that speed is distance divided by time. These formulas are on your formula sheet, which is on the back of your periodic table. Okay. All right. Um, so we got to differentiate between distance, displacement, speed, and velocity. And we'll do a little example of a very simple trip within Okotoks to kind of demonstrate how they work and how they tell us information about the same trip in different ways, or as I've said a few times already, from different points of view. Okay. So if you're like a Star Wars fan, it's the whole like Darth Vader is your father. Darth Vader betrayed and murdered your father, but it's the same story from different points of view. Okay, um, that's that's how the scalar and vector work. The round would try to get like kilometers an hour. This would be in kilometers divided yeah. by time and hours. Kilometers per hour. Kilometers over hours, or what we usually use meters over seconds. Okay? we usually use meters per second. Yeah. Okay. So, if you've ever gone hiking off trail or done any orienteering or anything like that, although for your generation this is less applicable because you have like GPS on you at basically all times unless you're out of cell range. Okay. Um, yeah, you can always just kind of know where you are. But back in the day when you had to use this you know, thing called a compass and a map, and the map was a two-dimensional piece of paper. Okay. Um, the way we describe things in normal life is only good at getting you hopelessly lost. Okay. So if I'm out in the, in the wilderness, okay, and someone tells me that something is, you know, 10 minutes from here, am I pretty screwed? Yep. Yep. How many choices do I have for which direction to go? 360. Yeah, I have 360 choices for which direction to walk, okay? Because they didn't specify that. There's like 10 minutes from here. Oh, great. But there's no... There's no trail. What do I do? Well, okay. then you walk ten yeah, minutes that way, and then you walk ten minutes back, and then you walk ten minutes another way, and then ten minutes back. Well, actually, actually, walk ten oh, minutes and then go in a circle. Yeah. So so how are you going to figure out wh where the circle is? I don't know. Yeah, so just well, walk well, straight like, As I said previously, I'm pretty well, how screwed. How are you going to figure out when okay. you stop the line again? Like, yeah. Every time yourself? And yeah, you count seconds, every time. 100%. Okay. But as you get tired, you walk slower. Exactly. Yeah, you have to have the same pace. Then count, like... 10 minutes and 20 seconds. This is good. You're illustrating my point. That is a terribly useless way to tell somebody where something is. Okay? It is only going to get them hopelessly lost. Now, that isn't to say that sometimes telling someone how long it takes to do something or go somewhere isn't useful information. It's just in a situation like that, it isn't very helpful. Okay? In a situation like that, a vector description of displacement would be more appropriate. Okay? Telling them that they need to walk uh, 800 meters, um, you know, 10 degrees north of east, would get them to where they needed to go. Okay? Um, what if there's a trail? Do I need to give them a direction then? No. Not necessarily. I would assume they could follow the trail. Okay? So, um, like on a map like this, for example, okay, this is the north boundary trail in Jasper. It's like a seven-day um, trip. Okay. Yeah, well, if you hike it like really fast at seven days, it can be up to like 15 if you really want to. Okay. Um, but if I start here at Seldom Inn Campground, there's a sign right there that says Snake Indian Falls Campground. That's this one right here. Okay. 28 kilometers. What is that sign assuming I'm going to do? Follow the trail. Follow the trail because that's what a sane person would do. Okay. <laughs> is they would follow the trail. Okay? It gave me a scalar description of where Snake Indian Falls Campground is from where I am. And that's an appropriate thing to do. It's why your road signs that we pass every day don't say Okotoks five kilometers south. Okay? We're already going south. Okotoks is just five kilometers if I stay on this road. Okay? That's good enough. A scalar description in that situation is fine. Okay? But notice that none of those road signs say Okotoks three minutes. <laughs> Okay? But that's what we do. Okay? Oh, yeah, it's like 10 minutes from here. No, it isn't. 
Okay? Stop doing that. It's a really bad habit to get into. Okay? Because we don't know. What if I'm on a bike? Okay? What if I'm walking and you're in a jet? Okay? It walk makes a faster. difference. Yeah, walk yeah. faster. Well, sure. I feel like okay. if they're in a jet, you're not going to be able to tell them it's 10 minutes away. Just like shout. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they're going faster than sound, because you're not going to hear you. Okay, um, so that sort of makes sense to everybody? So what I'm trying to illustrate here, guys, is that there's no one thing that's necessarily a bad piece of information to give, okay? There are times where it may not be as appropriate or useful, okay? In certain situations, we have to decide what's more useful, okay? An aircraft pilot is not going to want scalar descriptions of, of distance, okay? Because an aircraft pilot needs a heading, they need a vector they're going to fly in a straight line because there aren't any obstacles, okay? Whereas if I'm on the ground, I might need vector descriptions, I might need scalar descriptions, I might need to be told to follow this trail for 10 kilometers so I can use bridges to go across canyons, okay, and things like that, all right? So it all depends on the situation, what's more appropriate. So vectors, like, if you're going in a straight line, whereas scalar's kind of like obstacles in a way, in a sense? In a sense, yes. I mean, it is possible for, if you went in a straight line, your distance yeah. and your displacement will be at the same magnitude. Your, vec your displacement will still have a direction. But yeah, if it's a straight line, then they're the same. Yeah. Okay? But as we'll see in the example, there is a point where that breaks down. Okay? Okay, so when we say Calgary is 40 kilometers away, we make no reference okay, to which direction Calgary is. We just get on the road and we follow it because in that case, that scalar description is appropriate. We have a vast interconnected system of roads okay, that we can follow. And 40 kilometers, if we follow the signs, will get us there. And that's okay. That's appropriate. Okay? It's what Google Maps would tell you. Right? It says 42.8 kilometers. And it tells you this, but does this number change sometimes? Yep. Yeah, okay? Like it can update. The time will update, okay? The distance updates too as you travel along, okay? But sometimes this one stops and this one just starts to get bigger, okay? Like when you get into traffic, right? And so it can go from green to red, okay? Because time is, is dependent on how fast you can go. The distance is not. Okay? The distance is dependent on your route, yes, okay? and there is more than one route. Okay? Whenever you plan a trip in Google Maps, okay, you get different routes. If I want to go to the Calgary Zoo, I can take Highway 2 and then take Stony and then come back over, okay? or I can take uh, McLeod and go up to Glenmore and then go over and then take you know, Deerfoot to, to the zoo, or I can just take Deerfoot straight to the zoo. Okay? Well, not really, because Deerfoot, you have to turn off, but whatever, you get the idea. Okay. Are there different distances? Yes. Okay. Do I get different times? Yes. This one's a lot longer because the speed limit and the distance are different. Okay. Everyone okay with that? All right. Okay. So a more accurate, let's say, um, description would be that Calgary's 40 kilometers away. I said, no, sorry, that's not more accurate. A more descriptive. I should really change it. Did I change that in your notes package? More descriptive. More descriptive. Okay, good. It's changing your notes. Accurate's not really accurate, actually, oddly enough. And, um, a more descriptive description would be that Calgary's 40 kilometers away on a vector of 13 degrees east of north. Okay, so one of those was a distance, 40 kilometers. Okay. The other one is a displacement, and thus it has a direction on it. They're actually equally accurate. Okay. Why? Because they're both right. Well, they're both right, but that actually doesn't mean this isn't actually why they're the same accuracy. Okay. Which of these numbers is more accurate? Why is the lower one more accurate? It's measured to a greater degree of accuracy. Okay? The first one is measured to plus or minus one kilometer. Okay? So I know that whatever is I'm given that distance for is somewhere between 39 and 41 kilometers. Okay? It's only accurate to plus or minus one kilometer. Okay? The other one is accurate to plus or minus 10 meters. 
Okay, that's a lot more accurate. I know that that one is somewhere between 40.11 and 40.13 kilometers. That's a big difference. It is far more accurate. So accuracy is dependent on how you measure something, not whether it's vector or scalar. Okay, I could make this the vector quantity. And it's less accurate. Okay, because it's only measured to the nearest kilometer. And so accuracy depends on how you measure something, not whether it's vector or scalar. Because we get this idea in our head okay, that vector quantities are more accurate because they give more information. Accuracy depends on measurement, not whether you get extra information or not. Okay? Everyone all right with that idea? So for us in Science 10, okay, vectors for us are going to be what we call one-dimensional. Okay? They're going to be forward, backward, left, right, up, down, positive, negative. Okay, so they're on one axis, so they have one dimension. Okay, you are never going to have to do two-dimensional calculations in science 10. Compass directions are two-dimensional. I have 13 degrees west of north. Okay, well, now I have a, a horizontal and a vertical axis. That's two dimensions. Okay, when you get into crazy stuff in university, you bring in the z-axis. <coughs> now you have three dimensions. Okay, so you would have up, over, and in, okay, as your three dimensions. We don't do any of that in high school. Okay. All right. So, let's look at this situation here. I want to go from my house to Sprawl Mart. I mean, Walmart. Okay? Now, in Okotoks, unless you live right behind Walmart, and even then there's a fence, so uh, even if you live right behind, can you walk straight to Walmart? Well, you still have to go up and over. That's not straight. So unless you can like, go right fence. through phase yeah, through the, the fence, yeah. If you okay. line up your atoms perfectly, yeah. you could do that. Yeah. Walk yeah. Through yeah. The <laughs> so without any strange things going on, okay, it is unlikely that you can walk in a straight line from your house to Walmart. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Unlikely. Okay. So let's say that I'm following uh, the road. Okay. So I, you know, I come out of my neighborhood. Okay. Um, I get on you know, Northridge Drive, and then I go across the river where it becomes Southridge Drive, and then, you know, maybe I go uh, in on Cimarron Boulevard, and then over and like this, okay? So that's the path I have to follow to get to Walmart, we'll just say, okay? Let's say that that path is four kilometers. Okay, so if I'm in, if I'm walking, okay, and I've got the, you know, the thing that's measuring my steps, by the time I get to Walmart, it says I've walked four kilometers. Okay? Is that a distance or a displacement? Distance. That's a distance. It's scalar. I didn't give a direction. Why? Because I walked a whole bunch of different directions. Okay? I can't give one single direction. I walked a lot of places. Okay? So, four kilometers. Let's say that that took me a half an hour. How fast was I walking? Eight kilometers an hour. Eight kilometers an hour. How'd you do that? Times the time by two is eight times the distance by two. Eight kilometers per hour. Okay, that's one way to do it. Or could I do this? Yeah. Speed is distance divided by time. Okay, so if I go distance, four kilometers. Divided by time, 0.5 hours, and I get 8 kilometers per hour. Okay? Everybody all right with that? That's a fast It's a fast It's a brisk walk. A brisk walk. Average walk. Yes. Okay. Now, if I'm looking at this from a vector point of view, That blue line would represent my what? Starts with DL, so sounds displacement. That blue line represents my displacement. Is it shorter than my distance? Yes. yes, because as you've been told your whole life, the shortest route between two points is a straight line. Displacement is always the straight line. 
okay? Because displacement measures your change in position. My initial position was my house. My final position is Walmart, okay? So, well, I didn't teleport. This is just the same trick from two different points of view. How I actually got there and how much I changed my position in the process. It's the same trick. Okay? But from these different points of view, it looks different. Okay? So let's say that my displacement ends up being 2.7 kilometers at uh, 40 degrees south of east. Okay? Did that take a half an hour? No, it wasn't. Well, your position. That's the vector description of my trip. It took me a half an hour to change my position by that much. It doesn't mean I actually followed this. I followed the black line. Okay? But it took me a half an hour to change my position by the amount indicated by that blue arrow. So the time is still half an hour. Okay? Everybody all right with that? I should, but not on time. Time is a vector. Time is scalar. Time never gets an error over time. Okay? Now, if I want to calculate my velocity, I take my displacement and I divide it by time. Okay? So I take my 2.7 kilometers at 40 degrees south of east. And I divide it by a half an hour which is going to give me 5.4 kilometers per hour at 40 degrees south of east. Okay. Is it okay that my velocity and my displacement have the same vector? Yes. Actually, it's crucial. Think about it this way. If I travel at a velocity of 100 kilometers per hour north, is it possible for me to end up two kilometers east? No. My displacement is caused by my velocity, or vice versa, either way. They cause each other. Okay? So they must have the same vector. Okay? It is impossible for me to displace myself south of east by traveling at a velocity that's any direction other than that. Okay? Everyone alright with that idea? Okay, so same trip, two different points of view. We get two very different answers. Mm -hmm. Yes? I mean, I guess there is a way you could do that. If you went all the way around the world, yes. yes. Yeah, it is possible then. Okay. Since we don't deal with all the way around the world situations, okay, um, that won't come up. Flat earthers will love that one. Okay. Now, what do you mean? You'd get to the ice wall before you went around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's where vector and scalar really get different. Okay? Not that this has ever happened to me before, but I got all the way to Walmart and realized I didn't have my phone or my wallet. Well, I'm not going to walk around Walmart for the fun of it, because that place is crowded and disorganized and I can't stand being in it. Okay? So, I turn around and I walk exactly the same path home. At exactly the same rate. So, what's my total distance traveled now that I get back home? Eight kilometers, yeah. Okay, what's my total displacement now that I'm back home? Zero. Right. How do you not notice you don't have your phone or your wallet even when you walk? Because I'm only seeing <laughs> Okay, so I get all the way back home. My displacement is now zero. Here's why. Displacement measures your change in position. My initial position was home. If I go to Walmart and back, my final position is also home. So Therefore, I've walked for an hour, but accomplished nothing, except to walk a distance of eight kilometers and displace myself not at all. I mean, you got exercise. I got exercise. Calories. Yes, but in terms of a you know physics perspective. I didn't displace myself, or from a vector perspective, I had no displacement because I ended up back where I started. Okay? 
So if my displacement over the whole trip is zero, what's my velocity over the whole trip? Zero. Okay. But Remember, the, the formula for velocity is displacement divided by time. If my displacement is zero, zero divided by anything is zero. Okay. I can't have a rate. Okay. Velocity is the rate at which you change your position. Okay. So if I don't change my position, I can't measure the rate at which I change my position. I can't have a velocity if I don't have a displacement. Everyone all right with that? What's my speed over the whole trip, though? Eight kilometers per hour. Okay, so from it's the same trip, but those two points of view look very different. One's scalar, one's vector. Okay, in this case, neither one is necessarily more appropriate than the other to measure my trip. But here's a situation where one is. The odometer in your car, the little thing that's on the dash, is electronic now probably. Okay, um, does it measure distance or displacement? Distance. distance. It measures how far in total you have driven your car. Why is that better than displacement? If you drove to Walmart and back, then you'd have zero. That would well, be useless. It would be useless. Yeah. Okay? Because every time I got home, it would read what? No, it would read how far it is from the dealership you bought it at to yeah. where your house is. I don't know if you read Nobody that. ever has gotten that question right. Every time I ask that, everyone goes zero. No, it wouldn't read zero. You can get reads. a car to live to your house. You could. Well, where These was days, you could. Where was it manufactured? Yeah. Well, they actually, when it gets to the dealership, they usually hit the. They can they can reset the thing the computer. Okay. Back in the day, when when odometers were actually like little dials, you could pull the thing off and spin them back manually. And people That's what my that. truck is. Okay. Yeah, people would do that. It's really incredibly dishonest. And people would do it, and then they'd say, well, it only has you know. Um, 50,000 kilometers like on it. Not oh, it's seven. absolutely fraud. Oh. Yeah, that absolutely is fraud. Okay, but people did it. Okay, or really old cars, they didn't have, they only Just had five down. numbers. So if it, had, if it had flipped over, okay, it only read, you know, 20,000, but it was actually like 320,000 because it had flipped three times. Okay, so now obviously it's electronic. It's much more difficult to hack, okay, uh, than it used to be. Okay. So if it read displacement, though, it would always read a very low number when you came home, okay? which would be great for resale, but you know, it's not very accurate. You could have driven the thing around the world a couple of times, okay? and it only says it has three kilometers on it. Okay? Not really accurate. So there's a time where distance is appropriate, a scalar description, like on the odometer of your car, okay? and when displacement would be appropriate. Okay? And the same is true for speed and velocity. Okay. On a road that twists and turns, I don't want a velocity limit because I'm going to have to have a sign every five inches. Okay, because if the road turns just the slightest amount, I need a new sign. Okay, speed limit. This is how fast to go. Okay, not how fast and in what direction to go. Okay, you never see a velocity limit sign. Okay, just a speed limit sign. Okay? It's just not appropriate. Now, that's something else to keep in mind. If you ever get pulled over by the police, okay. And they ask, do you know how fast you're going? What do they want? You to tell them how fast you're going. They want your speed or your velocity? Speed. Speed. Tell if you give them your velocity, there will be a follow-up question. Are you okay? No. <laughs> how much have you had to drink today? Okay? Because if they pull you over and you go, how fast, they go, how fast were you going? And you say 118 kilometers an hour at 10 degrees south of west. Is this from your They're going to think that's suspicious. No, that's not from experience. Because right? um, that'd be a weird way to answer that question. Okay, and they kind of get triggered by weird answers. Okay, so and, and rightfully so. Um, so yeah, it's they want to know how fast. They want to know your speed. Tell them your speed and be honest, because they know. It's just a formality when they come up and ask you how fast you were going. They already know how fast you were going. And, yeah, telling them something else is only going to get them upset, and they'll have every right to be upset with you at that point. Okay? So sometimes scalar is appropriate, sometimes vector is appropriate. Are we getting that message? I've only said that about 25 times. Okay. So is everyone following this idea here, though, the two different points of view? Okay. All right, so this is all the math. See, I almost had the numbers right. Okay, um, that we just did. Okay, now, three rules of algebra. Write these down, okay? 
We're going to need these because we're going to go over how to manipulate B equals D over T here in just a second. Using B equals D over T is just like using the mole equation, okay? N equals little m over big M, all right? We want to follow these rules of algebra, okay? If I want to move a variable, I perform the opposite operation, okay? What I do to one side of an equation, I do to the other side, the golden rule of algebra, okay? And the third rule of algebra, okay, is that I want to move what's not attached first, okay? That is not going to apply to B equals D over T. Okay. It only applies to, to formulas where I would have four or more variables, okay. especially including addition, subtraction operations. Okay. So we'll look at both here in just a sec. Okay, so let's look at this formula here. This is one that you're going to use in about a week. Okay. This one calculates acceleration. So A stands for acceleration. VF is final velocity, VI is initial velocity, T is time, okay? I want to solve for VF. What should I move first? Up to times both sides by, is that F? T. T yes, I would want to move time first. I want to move T first because it's not attached to VF. Okay, so I go back to rule number one. If I want to move something, I do the opposite. Right now I'm dividing by time, so the opposite is multiply, right? So I would multiply this side by time. Time's going to cancel, okay? Time's going to come over here. All right, I want to get VF by itself. What do I need to move now? Okay, right now I'm subtracting VI, so what should I do with it? Okay, so I add VI to both sides. Now I'm solving for VF. Is that very hard? As long as you follow those three rules of algebra, you can go a lot of places. Okay? That got me through university physics. Those three rules of algebra. Okay? If you can remember those three rules and follow them, you can manipulate any equation. Uh, question. What would you do to get VI? Okay, what would you do to get VI? Well, I would do exactly the same thing I've done right here, so that VI ends up being positive, and then I would subtract t times a over to the other side, okay? We'll get to that when we start manipulating that formula, okay? All right, so, right now this solves for v. I wanna solve for t. What should I move? I should move T. Weird, but true. Because right now, where is T? It's on the bottom. So here's what most people initially want to do. Most people want to go, well, D is on the top. So if I divide both sides by D, I get this. What am I solving for? No, I'm solving for 1 over T. D divided by D is 1. That leaves a one on the top, okay? T stays on the bottom. So V divided by D is actually gonna get one over T. Is that the same as T? No, that's like saying one over two is the same as two. Last time I checked, those are both very different, okay? So whenever we solve for something, we want to make sure that we are in fact solving for something that is on the top of the equation. So if you're solving for something that's on the bottom of an equation, you have to move it to the top, okay? So that's gonna mean I should first multiply both sides by T and then divide both sides by V. I get the inverse of what I had before, okay? We're gonna work on some problem solving stuff to do with that tomorrow. And then your quiz on Thursday will have some V equals D over T stuff. Okay? All right, we'll leave it there for today, guys.